This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer, songwriter out of Southern California. His name is Ricky Jones. Mr. Jones, how are you doing today, sir? I'm wonderful, Todd. How are you today? I'm great, man. Thanks for joining the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Man, thank, I appreciate you having me. Yeah, I must apologize because we've been kind of playing phone tag, email right tag, on. I guess. Right on, right on. <laughs> and, uh, we finally got you on the show. I'm real excited about yeah. that. So, uh, again, welcome. Thank you, brother. No Thank problem. You. you have a new single out um, that is called Lover. Right on. Uh, yeah. I just. Great little, little stepping. Yeah. Thing. You know, I was going to bring that up to you later. Amen. Um, but, yeah, it's a great song. And, Thank you, brother. Um, no problem. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, okay. Uh, but for right now, I want to get to know uh, Ricky Jones. So tell us about yourself. Man, I went to Southern. I'm from Florida, Vero Beach, Florida. That's where the L.A. Dodgers um, used to go for spring training. Beautiful weather, beautiful beaches. Anyway, so um, I came, I went to Southern University. I marched in the band and um, I sang at three Bayou Classics. So leaving um, college, graduating from Southern, I came to California only for a vacation, right? So um, I met Keith Andes, a uh, friend of mine. We call each other soulmate writers because uh, we've been writing together for a long time. For like for After Seven, Babyface, I've sung back, Lionel Richie, backgrounds for Celine Dion, list goes on. Um, uh, Winona Judd, I work with Tommy Sims and Wayne Kirkpatrick, who wrote Change the World for Eric Clapton. So I'm just giving you a little bit, bit of my background. I like from I like country music. I like every everything. But um, so I came out here on a vacation, Todd, and then I met this guy from Motown, and I was in a group called Yours Truly on Motown. And um, I met him from Motown, and he, he, he told me, he said, man, I was going to go to law school at Howard University. So he told me, he said, um, when you come, I met, I met him about 11 o'clock that night. I was looking the same because on Monday I was going to go to, you know, school, you know what I'm saying? So I um, met this guy and he said, uh, man, you can sing. Um, you need to stay in California. And I said, but I don't know anybody because I was out there visiting the girl. And then he said, well, hello, my name is Jonathan Clark. Um, and he was vice president of Motown at that time. He said, so now you know somebody. So I, I said, okay, I'm staying. <laughs> that was just it, you know. So I, anyway, I got a record deal. I was with a guy group. We traveled and went around the world and um, went on tour. We, um, and then we broke up, and then I had a solo record on Universal. And uh, But Keith Andrews and I stayed in contact the whole while, and we worked together all the time. He actually did a group, the group that was on a, a Motown, Yours Truly. He actually did the record. So anyway, um, we just started, you know, I just continued to write. I didn't stop doing this, you know. So um, years later, I'm still in California on that vacation. And uh, <laughs> we uh, started doing records. And he said, man, look, let's just put one out every 18th because you write, we, uh, you write so much. We write so much. Let's just do it. And that's what we started doing. And here I am now. Wow. Yeah. Just that, yeah. uh, that one chance meeting. Huh? Man. You know, and it, man, look, Todd, I, I was out partying and, and I was with his brother-in-law, not knowing I'm getting ready to, look how God set it up, though, not knowing I'm getting ready to meet the vice president of marketing and promotion at Motown, who, you know, so I'm out partying, we get, you know, with a couple of girls and having a good time. Actually, his fiance was a classmate of mine that went to Southern. So uh, um, she said, well, my, you know, my boyfriend, da, 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 we, we can hang out. So we, it was, you know, we all hanging out and I'm singing in the car, having a good time. He said, hold on, man. Uh, my brother-in-law, boy from Motown, you know, we called his brother-in-law. He said, come over right now. And that's what we did, you know? And um, I've been out here ever since, man. 
you know, old country boy living in LA. <laughs> now here I am. <laughs> how, how long ago was that? That was 26 years ago, man. Wow, wow. I know. Okay. I know. And I it seemed like it it was just yesterday. And then, you know, I end up uh at at the end up um my mama thought I was crazy cuz you know, you, you, you know, I'm going to law school or I'm going to stay here with no with I had dog I had three pair of shoes. <laughs> Yeah, about four pair of pants because I've only here this weekend, you know, that weekend, you know what I'm saying? And then because I shipped all my stuff to DC and things like that, and and that stuff's still in DC, man. <laughs> 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 hey, I no clothes, Todd, oh, nothing, man. man. Okay, and I, I went for it, and here I and I never stopped, and here I am talking to you right now, you know? Yeah, yeah, God is good, absolutely, all the time, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. did you come from a, uh, cause you said you were in the band at Southern. Yeah. I marched, I played trumpet in the band. All right. Did you come and, from um, a musical family or? My father um, was the director of the choir at the church. So me and my sisters and brothers always sang what's called the Macedonia angel choir. And, you know, growing up uh, where I grew up, I, I was had the pleasure and was fortunate to when we were, like to have Shirley Caesar, to have James Cleveland. My dad was in a gospel group called the Mighty Elko. So they all, man, I've seen the five blind boys eating my mama's dressing, you know, come to our house, you know, so I'm sitting around. And um, that was one of my first times singing a song, a song called Got to Get a Message to Jesus. So, you know, the, and I felt that, that taste, I don't know, what, a fire in it that um, I've been chasing ever since, you know, and um, so, um, my dad can sing, everybody sings, you know. I got uncles that think they can sing and they write songs. They so they crazy. So they when you know how that is when you're with them, they say, Nep, you need to write a song like woo, 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 like this, Nep. I'm like, man, God, aunt. but you know, it's so amazing because my whole family support me, you know. They don't I don't I wouldn't change my decision, Todd. Like what I did, you know, I used to joke with the guys when I was in the group, say, Man, I would have some money in my pocket if I would have been a lawyer, but I'm joke. I was joking, you know, about it. But I would not change. I would not change that for nothing in the world. So when I grew up, like in the seventh and eighth grade, we used to go. I didn't go out a lot. We would, we would go like to the skate rink, things like that. But on, on in Florida and Vero, small town called, called Gifford, we would go to church and had concerts at the middle school. You know, so all these people came in, like the gospel keynotes. Um, you know, so I knew Willie and Paul that sang in the gospel keynotes, these groups. And um, that's why all the girls hung out at. So we shoot, you know, the angel crowd would sing and, you know, all the girls were there. You know, you know what I'm saying? Now, that was that's where we went. That's where we had fun. It was beautiful. Okay. My kids don't know anything about that life. <laughs> it's different. Right, right. <laughs> So you had this all this exposure and just soaking it all in, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. I was fortunate, yeah. I couldn't go outside and play like I, all the time if we didn't sing good in church Sunday. <laughs> My friends come knock on the door. Mr. Bobby, can Ricky come out? No, ask him why he can't come out. He'd ask it. Voice almost hoarse. You sing in all kind of wrong ways. And if you didn't sing good in church, Todd, you can't go out. You can't go out on Sunday. <laughs> oh, God. That was a beautiful experience. I learned a lot from that, you know. Okay. I did it. Yeah. Let me ask you, because since you grew up in a um, gospel household, um, mm -hmm. did uh, were you allowed to play other genres of music like R and B and soul and my my mama didn't um, listen to circular music, but my my dad didn't stop us from listening to it, and and then I would say like back then the music wasn't so R rated too you know um but she didn't listen to it i wrote it on the piano a lot like you know sit and and uh play r b country because the, the stations that we listened to were they played everything on one station like you know they played the commodores and then they would play the eagles everything would be on one station you know so i listen to all types of music okay and uh yeah i'm actually doing a country record right now too are you serious Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. hey, when uh, when do you anticipate that one being ready? Um, February. Okay, so right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, it's, man. It's, it's dope too. I'm excited about it, man. It's dope. It's so dope. Is it? 
I got banjo, I got banjo, steel oh, guitars. Oh, oh. I got it's dope, man. It's dope. I'm serious. Okay. So is I, it? I'll like, email it to you and let you check it out, though. I will. Appreciate that. For real. For real. Um, is it more uh, traditional country, or is it more like Little Nas X? No, it's traditional. Traditional. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's traditional. Okay. My um, one dude that, I, that I'm doing, um, it's it's like a. Uh, what's that group? Anto, they changed the name Antebellum. They changed their name. Um, I forgot to something, but it's like uh, even Sanaa Twain, something like in Winona Judd, like you know, in in, in that vein. In that okay. vein, I'm excited about it though. Okay. And we got a lot more stepping songs, man. They, oh my God, we just Todd. I'm telling you before, but dog, we just did Lord and Mercy. I mean, I get excited though. Dog, you got to. We we just did a um, another one, man. And I'm like, we're gonna drop the mic on it. It's dope. <laughs> I mean, it's dope. It is it's dope. Okay. Like I, I me and my wife around here dancing. It's dope to it. Yeah, it's dope, man. It's dope. Okay. And we're gonna put some live streams on it, man. It's gonna be beautiful. You'll get it. You'll hear it. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. We'll post it on our new music section. Yes, sir. On our website yes, too as well. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, so you are a um you've been writing songs for since you were a kid, right? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. To girls, I used to do a song called um, "I Used to Do." Is it uh, "My Girl's Eyes"? They're so beautiful. But in the "My Girl," we would say it like say for instance, if her name was Andrea, Andrea's eyes or Melissa's eyes. So any girl that you had, say the song. You could just put their name and say, "Baby, I just wrote this song for you." <laughs> yeah, well, we, I've been doing it for a while. Oh my god! Okay. You wrote this song for me, yeah, baby. I wrote this song for you. Mm -hmm. Man, okay, that's that's quite a hustle you got there. Right? <laughs> yeah, that was. Nah, <laughs> my mama, my mama say, "Boy, you better use that the right way." Yeah, <laughs> you better use that the right way. What you doing? Because she hit me doing it too. You you sang that song last night to somebody. You better stop doing that, boy. I said, okay, mom. I already knew. Huh? Yes, yeah, she did. Yes, yeah, she did. All right. Let's talk about uh, your latest um, single called Lover. Right on. Walk us through that. Tell us about the, uh, from start to finish. Well, um, we, I was in Atlanta and um, like the whole family was around and I was listening and they were playing family reunion from the OJs and and people just reminiscing. I was really sitting back being quiet and, and looking at it. I say, boy, now if we, if there was like stepping songs that everybody can just step, you know, cause I do love R. Kelly stepping the name of love. And I'm just looking, I say, you know, it just, to me, we always at weddings do that two step or the, the hustle dance or everything, you know, we, and we make up different variations of it. And I'm like, man, um, so I, and I'm actually sitting next to my, wife eating some um, uh, banana pudding and I was and she said you kind of quiet I said no she said you you got some in your head I said yeah it's cooking too baby and I said I just think you know like it just seemed like a lover's party with relatives that loving each other and I just um, I just feel that way today so the next day um, you know that night I was playing around with some chords and nothing came to me but I'm still it was just heavy in my heart and then um I went to the studio with Keith and I said, man, I got this concept about lovers and houses on a hill. And then he said, man, that's how I do. I said, man, I just want, and I want the strings at the beginning of it, but I just ain't right. So I just started saying, I want to be a lover. And I'm like, um, I got the hook already. That sap sucker came right then. And then I promise you two takes, the song was finished. Um, I said, just let me go. And off the top of my head, I started saying, the, I said, let me do the backgrounds. He said, you got them? I, said, I don't have it already, but let me do them. And we did another song like that too. God is amazing. It's like the ch like a channel was coming in, you know what I mean? Got to reach into your chain of thoughts. But when what I'm thinking about that, um, I thought about Howard Hewitt too, like how how he sings, and I love his voice too. So I'm just thinking about that. So what happened when I say I got a, a reach into a chain of thoughts, I'm thinking about really knowing about my woman 
you know, and I just want to, I want to be your lover. I know these are simple things that people want and say, and I, just, I want it to be simple too. So then we started singing and I promise you, I forgot the lyrics because they were on the top of my head and I forgot the lyrics. And after we did the song, I had to write the lyrics out. That's how the song went. And, um, and I promise you, we, we finished it in two to three hours and then we danced about six <laughs> playing it and playing it, you know, just playing it over and over, over playing it, you know what I'm saying? Then, and then I called, um, my wife had dropped me off to the studio. So then she came back, picked me up with the kids and I put it, put it in the car and listen, we stopped in the neighborhood and we was in my, my, my excuse me, my brother-in-law's truck, Todd, and we country now too now. So we stopped in the neighborhood and started playing that thing by a part. And my kids got out dancing too, stepping too. And then, it took me back to, to the night before when everybody was at the house listening to music and may move a little bit. But then um, then I then I played it for a couple of relatives, like, you know, like after the holiday, you know, we played a little bit and then they started dancing too. Like, you know, but me and my kids got out the car. They said, Dad, this might make you want to, like, I'm going to show you this, you know, make you want to move. And they be out dancing, all seven of them. We had a great time. You hear me? We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. VGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com Now... Back to our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what it was cold too, but we still was out there dancing. I won't forget that. <laughs> do um is that sort of an anomaly? Does do you write a, I mean, that was finished in a few hours, but yeah. how long does it normally take you to write a you know, it depends. Song? It depends. I'm writing some with it with um uh butter, a friend of mine named Butter right now. He's out of New York, he uh, works with Layla Hathaway, and he called me like I got some tracks about three months ago, and, you know, and I just got inspired to write on it now. You know, it just depends. But, you know, you, you don't want to rush things because when God give it to you on different things, he give you, you know, he just give it to you. I'm not just writing to be right neither. I love it. You know, I love doing it. And it's about following the art because everything else is going to follow, you know. So um, it just depends. I, I remember doing a song, Set It Off. I was telling you this happening. Keith and I were doing a song called Set It Off and that's going to be out. I promise you, it's a ballad. It's, I'm just, I thank God. It's, I'm mean, I'm serious. I, I want to send it to you, dog, so you can so I can get your, your expertise on it too, you know what I'm saying? But, dog, I sat down and I promise you I had, I had um three lines and I told him the same thing, just give it to me. And I was saying the backgrounds, line, everything at the same time, just everything, okay, say that track. It was going like that and he said, I'm just going to let you go because, and he's, and, and, um, Oh my God! When you're gonna remember this, because I'm gonna remind you about it when I when I send it to you, man. This is song set it off. I was talking about too, and you know, in the middle of the night too. I'm sure you, because you're a creative person. If if God give you an idea, a topic, if you don't get up and write it down, the next day you may forget it. Yeah, and true. that be that be that time. So you know, I'm up a lot like that. I got phones and so much stuff full of uh, songs on it. Like it's ideas that you know. And, you know, it comes from like being birthed, you know, like a song to me is like a baby, you know, so you plant the seed, you know, anything that's going on in your life. You, you may not write about it two, three years down the road or four or five, you know, even knowing, you know, how how, how you've been used to put it out and for other people to listen to and help somebody else too. But it depends. Oh, it depends. Okay. Um, now that's out and that's a smash, I think. I Thank you, man. That. I appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate no problem. And uh, so are you going to follow that up with uh, an EP, an album, besides yes. the country album you got coming out early next yeah, year? Yeah, what, what, what we're going to do is uh, um, the middle of February, we're going to put out an EP with uh, six songs. And then um, that April still, um, the country, the, I got three or four country songs, that, um, EPs that we, uh, EP we're going to put out also. Too. And we're not going to stop either. Just continue to keep going, you know. Okay. And making noise. 
Okay. Well, you've you've written for a lot of artists. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Talk to me about the process of getting a song submitted to an artist. Um, um, I guess, you know, it, it, it did depend on who, who you know until you start, like, getting in the circle because, you know, it could be could be hard, you know. Um, and now um, the Internet has made it so easy to do so many different things for yourself, you know, and other people. But I've been in studios with uh, with, with Lionel Richie and we just got get to a piano and we just start writing songs that never came out. I still have, you know, ideas that, that you know, and getting all kind of tips from him. James Ingram. Um, um, God bless his soul. One of my great friends, like best friend. Oh, I got to tell you a story about this. Okay. So Keith was at James house and they called me and we wrote a song called how much I love you. And, um, um, I did it. James passed away. James did it. So I did it to also, but the first line is called, I, I read stories of meeting a princess and living love after. But James was sitting, there was him and Keith was sitting on, on the piano for like three hours and they could not come over the first line. He said, hold on, let me call my boy Ricky. He called me. James said, boy, bring your butt over here now. That's my first time meeting him, right? And at that time, I, I never forget this. I needed, I needed gas to get there, man. And um, didn't have no gas money, right? Him not really knowing. So he said, I feel something in my heart, brother. And I love you already. And he said, um, and we're going to have a, we're going to be friends forever. And it was the truth. Uh, we actually did a duet together too. But anyway, so he um, he gave me his credit card. He said, go to the 76th station off of 3rd in La Brea. Go there. That's where you go. I say, why are you giving me this? He said, boy, take your ASS there. <laughs> I said, really? He said, yeah, that's a grocery store across. You need anything from there? Get it. And his wife's name is Debbie. Debbie, what's my pen to this? And she said, James, why you got to yell? He said, I just want to whisper pen to the, you know, I'm giving, he, he going, he finna use it. I said, this for me? He said, Debbie, why do I have to run across stupid people? Then I tell you it was for you, boy. Go ahead on. I'm telling you, I went and filled up, got groceries, and he's been my friend ever since. You understand? Like, you know, um, but writing for him, that was an experience I had with him. You know, um, so many different ones. I wrote with uh, Wayne, um, Kirkpatrick, and jo I mean, they wrote for like, oh my God, for so many uh, Grammy Award winning people. Off the, off the head, I can't name, but I flew out to Nashville and Tommy Sims, Tommy Sims, and um, Mike Madonna come floating through the studio with Tommy Sims. You know, just God just be blessing you. You know what I mean? You're in the right place at the right time. That's why I would not change my um, my decision on staying out here, right? Like like I did through the good, bad or good, because I you got I counted all joy, even in the midst of it. You know, it's been a, it's been a blessing. It's been I a blessing, you, brother. Um, and that's what putting out good energy does too. I believe. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Good energy, you get good energy back. You're right, Todd. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. You can't beat that. Can't beat it at all. Um, no. So we got this pandemic thing we're going through right now. Yeah. Um, before the pandemic, though, um, did you have a pretty full um, 2020 planned? I really did. Like actually being in Vegas on my own gig, being in Vegas and Palm Springs, um, doing, my, doing my own music and having my own um, in, a, in a hotel, my own room. They don't do this, but it, I caught a deal out there to do this. And all of a, you know, all of a sudden this happened. Like to literally do Ricky Jones' show. Oh. And um, it's still happening, but there's a new type of plan. You know, you have to wait and see. People are doing things outside now in California. You can't be outside, you know, more than 10, 15 people, 10 people now. Right. Even at family gatherings they're saying you know so things have been flipped around but it's been a good time to write songs on this time too and to like uh fill up on your vault and write songs and you know get a lot of things out that that um that have been embedded in in me you know to do you know songs to do you know okay. and i think that's what a songwriter creative people this is a good time it's not a it's a different time too trying times but i believe i believe it's a time that we're supposed to be doing this too i right. feel that right are you um 
Are you an independent artist or are you signed to a label or? Uh, independent. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And are I've you? Been, I've done the label thing are you twice. Okay. Yeah, I have. Well, and then I was doing something that too, that, that it was an other people's dream. Even though I was the artist, I'm doing what they wanted me to do. Now I'm doing what I want to do and what uh, I'm being led to do, you know, and not trying to um, be something that I'm not, you know, that that tends to happen for a lot of artists. And then I'm not chasing the money. I really, I'm, I'm chasing the art, you know, and it, and it is about the art too, because you'll feel so much better inside um, doing it that way. And still a really selling out or selling your soul, uh, you know, or, or, or being a gimmick, you know? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I guess it gives you some peace of mind too. That yeah, you're yeah, your own shots and yes. Yeah. Okay. And, it, and I feel happy uh, that when my kids hear the, my music, that they know where it comes from. And, you know, and it's a it, conversation that I've have, I have with them. They're like, dang, daddy, you talking about this? And it, it's the truth. Yeah. I am talking about there's certain things I talk to y'all them about. Uh, I write about, you know, all my friends' relationships. I put it out there in the streets. <laughs> and, if, and if they hear don't don't let them get nothing to drink. <laughs> Boy, you talk about me. I ain't know you was gonna do that. And you know what that well, I need to get credit for that. That's how they start talking like that. <laughs> oh God, God is good. Do you yeah. do uh or have you done the um uh, the uh, Instagram and Facebook live and no, I haven't, I, I, you know, I just haven't, I'm a little country boy. I need to like my kids. So I need to get with the times, but I haven't though. I haven't, but I will because I'm um, like, I was getting ready to set up a, we were going to do shows in like a, a warehouse, um, but we can't have people. And, you know, you know, you want that crowd to, um, I don't know, to, to electrify you and you can have a feeling of some, some type of feeling. I don't know, like to, to, to sing too, but I guess, you know, it's a different thing too. You know, the Facebook live, it's a different thing, but I'm, I'm really, I'm gonna get into it. I'm gonna get into it and start doing some stuff with it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jones, anything else you want to add? This has been a great conversation, man. Man, I'm just happy to be, heard and I appreciate your time too, Ty. I mean, you know, and I know it's like I said, it's trying times for all of us, but we're being innovated and doing things in a different way too, you know? Right. And I look and I see people are pulling together a lot more than we did too. Even in the industry, you know, I see that everybody felt something. So we all got something in common now. You know what I mean? So it's like a natural thing talking to you, you know, you call yesterday and I'm like, you sounded like somebody I knew. And just, that was funny to me, the conversation. Then you heard me cussing a little bit. And then um, I was, I, I talked to him afterwards. We just laughed. And then he, and then uh, talking to you today, I already like felt I knew some of you because you heard me, you know, I just, I said, I can't, I would tell my wife, I baby, that was so funny that day. And I said, I felt embarrassed too, baby. I feel, she said, well, at least you know you cuss a little bit. <laughs> Say that ain't good. <laughs> yeah, that was uh that was quite surprising when I got. Um, I know, dog. I know. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, he, he. I know. I know. And he just a laughing about it too. I said, Terrence, man, you get you got me looking bad. I said, now I got to be real careful for now. I said, you got me looking bad. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing I never heard before. So. I, hey, man, man. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Usually, it's directed at me though. <laughs> Like, who's this Terrence that you keep talking about? <laughs> oh, shoot. Why are you calling me Terrence? Uh, I know, right, 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 right. right. It, was all, it was all good, though. Yeah, man. All yeah. Um, so, um, speaking of the, the music business, let me just uh, uh, reference back to that for a second. You've been in the, in the business, you said, uh, quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. How, how do you feel the... Uh, the business has changed just through the time that you've been in it. I see that artists have more control. I still believe that artists need more push, you know, I know, you know, but I believe that and more help, but I do believe we're more, we're in more control and we can do what we want to do. Cause it was, you know, it was a time Todd, when the A&R person would come into the studio and didn't know how to 
any button on the console and telling you what to do and didn't have a clue about it. You know what I mean? You'll be changing things up or something. And I promise you, I've experienced it a couple of times. I've seen other artists um, experience it too. You've been told what to do. And if you're not being true to yourself, you know, and that's, boy, that's hard. Because you talk about sleeping, just think about singing something that you could have reached. It could have reached somebody's heart. But then you weren't true to that art and true to that. You weren't true to yourself and you had to do it. Some people think they have to do it too. But now artists ain't got to do a lot of things. You know, a lot of record companies got to jump on board with them. And they, we're in a lot more control situation than we were. Um, I would say that it has changed, you know, um, for that. You know, I believe a lot of uh, record companies now are seeing that way and I'm kind of conforming to it now. Hopefully, you know, we still be in control of our every you know our masters and everything like we should be you know and be smart about it and okay. don't sell out no matter right. what yeah be true to yourself okay so it's yeah. not like you're saying that the, that the business has has improved for the better yeah for i would the, say that and at that. first it was scary, was scary cuz you know you always think i can't wait to get i need to get signed the major so i can have money to do this and do that and now you realize you're seeing a multitude of people doing it without <laughs> doing it without a record company telling them what to do and supporting and taking care of their families, you know, get doing, getting shows and getting money and taking care of your family, you know? Right. So, and that's good to see because right. it, it, it is a struggle. It is a struggle. Right. Yeah. Um, why don't you, uh, why don't you plug some of your social media uh, connects as well? Are you on social media at all? Yeah, I'm on um, Facebook, uh, the real Ricky Jones on Instagram and Ricky Jones on Facebook. And also, and also, uh, I tweet now. Just started on Twitter. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm getting with it now. I am. Yeah, I, I am. Now I need to be. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a YouTube channel as well? I do not have a YouTube okay. channel. No, okay. I do not. All right. So we'll. I will be setting that up during the first of the year, though. Okay. Yeah, I will be doing that. So we'll post um, Ricky's um, social media stuff on our website as well. Yes, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, man. I appreciate uh, your support, dog. Seriously, and I and I um, I really um, it makes me feel good in my heart that you really um love the song and like it like that too, you know, and support. It really do, you know, it really do. I can't uh, thank you enough for that. And it takes all of us to, you know, I feel that way. That's why I'm like, man, I'm gonna sing some more stuff and just even stuff that you may not play on your, on, you know, that on your criteria or not. But I'm, I'm gonna sing you some stuff just like get your feedback and you say, Rick, I like that, you know. Yeah. I don't mind doing that, you know. Yeah, no problem, man. I, sure. I'm not gonna tell you I stopped the car and started dancing when I heard it. But... Not that. <laughs> How you doing? But I did enjoy it. You okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that's what we did in the cold. Yeah, it so was. Did. Yeah, it it it's uh. I like it because it's uh it's reminiscent of music from the uh, you know the seventies and the eighties. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So it yeah. kind of takes you back. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. And, and and we our generation need that too. Absolutely. We need, we need that. Absolutely. We need that. One hundred percent correct. I agree. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, Mr. Jones. Mr. Ty. Appreciate you, sir. I appreciate you too, my brother. <laughs> Keep us posted, man, and uh, let us know what's going on. I will. I will keep yeah. you posted, man. Thank you for supporting uh, Ricky Jones, man. Love us. Yeah, no I appreciate problem, that. Brother. And it's everybody, good. go grab it too, man. Oh, so where can we? Pe where can people pick it up? At? It's on every every uh, place that you can buy. It. Uh, iTunes, Amazon, everywhere. So, just you know, look at Ricky Jones. Um, iTunes, look at uh, look my name up, and it's on there. Uh, we have a couple more songs we released the last four months, also too, that are getting good uh, radio play. Um, so we're excited about. Lovers actually would be um, on a on an album with new uh, independent artists too, and it's going to come out um, at the end of January. I'll let you know the release date of that. Okay, uh, I'll let you know. Um, that's a blessing too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it, Mr. Jones. Appreciate that's you, Mr. man. Jones. And, Appreciate uh, you. No problem, brother. And love everybody, man. And happy holidays too, man. Yeah. Stay safe, man. I shall. You too, man. Thank you for your time, brother. All right. And that's Ricky right. Jones, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. 
You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Ricky Jones. You can find out more about Ricky on his social media sites. Also, check out the profile we did on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.